Wow, I can't believe we're already in March. I just love this time of the year for sports in general, because we got the NBA playoffs on the verge of taking off. I mean, have you looked at the Western Conference standings? Hella close. Plus, the NFL is having a free agent frenzy right now with players signing to new teams left and right. Shout out my Chicago Bears. And the World Baseball Classic is happening as we speak, with teams like Japan, US, Puerto Rico, and even Mexico going crazy. But as great as all that is, nothing tops the hype that March Madness has to it. I mean, it's nearly perfect. First off, you got schools who would almost never be on national TV for any sport playing on ESPN in front of millions. With a 68 team bracket, the content is almost never ending. I mean, over the course of just four days, the fans get 48 games and the format alone is unmatched. The reason it's so exciting is because there's no room for error with teams not being allowed any slip ups if they wanna just stay in. And while all of that is great, I'd have to say that Cinderella stories might just be the best part of the whole thing. It takes rooting for an underdog to a whole new level. And the thing is, unlike other leagues, every team in the NCAA March Madness tournament feels like they have a chance to go very far. And recent history proves this. Just last year, a small little school from Jersey City, New Jersey entered the tournament for the fourth time in their school's history and was a 15th seed. So just being there was an accomplishment for not only the school, but also their head coach, Seton Hall alum, Shaheen Holloway. And being the 15th seed, it meant that the St. Peter Peacocks were going to match up against a two-seeded blue blood in Kentucky, who thought they'd have a first round bye, let's be honest. But that didn't happen because Dougie Edder and Daryl Banks III absolutely took over versus Kentucky, leading to one of, if not the arguably biggest upset in tournament history. At least top five, come on, it was crazy. But their story didn't end there because the boys got ready for their second round matchup two days later versus John Morant's former school, Murray State. And St. Peter's did it again. And this time in a more dominant fashion as the Peacocks won their game by a solid 10 points. And that win was in large thanks to Casey Nadefu's team leading 17 points. Plus the dude had a solid six blocks and 10 rebounds. Now, winning that game meant that St. Peter's was going to the Sweet 16 where they'd go head-to-head -head versus a three-seeded Purdue team, who was full of studs, but their best player was probably future NBA star Jaden Ivey, who didn't shoot the best versus the Peacocks, and honestly, I don't know if St. Peter comes away with that three-point win if Jaden Ivey shot better than one for six from deep. Well. The Peacocks did in fact win that game, 67-64, with their leading scorers being big men Clarence Rupert and Daryl Banks. And that win brought this Cinderella story of a team all the way to the Elite Eight, where the Peacocks matched up against North Carolina. Speaking of North Carolina, talk about falling off. I mean, I know some of their guys got drafted or graduated. But the fact that this team went all the way to the national championship exactly a year ago, and yet they missed up tournament entirely is just wild to me. Let me know in the comments if anything like this has ever happened before. Anyway, back to the St. Peter's game. I remember watching this game, but more importantly, I remember how fast I turned the game off because the Peacocks held on as tight as they could for a solid four minutes. But after that, this game was wraps. Talk about a terrible ending, but that's just sports. It almost never goes the way you want it to, and it definitely didn't go St. Peter's way, with them losing by 20 in a massive blowout. However, besides the awful ending, everything else about the journey was a pure dopamine overload. All of America fell in love with St. Peter's over the course of a week, and that's what makes this March Madness tournament the best in sports. All right, the second half of this video is just me filling out my bracket for 2023. And a warning in advance, I don't know every single thing about every team, but I'm gonna just do my best and have fun with it, okay? All right. All right, here we go with time for the bracket. 
So let's start in the South. We have Alabama versus either AMCC or SMU. Now, this game hasn't happened yet, but I don't think it really matters, right? I, you know, Alabama, Brandon Miller clears. Come on, let's be real. All right, Maryland versus West Virginia. Now, this game, this game is going to be hard. Let's see, let's see. Um, top versus top 25 teams, they both kind of suck. Maryland's a little better. Uh, Conference-wise, West Virginia kind of, come on, pick it up. But West Virginia does have more points per game right here they do have more than maryland so i mean they score more let's see maryland is led by star jameer young sophomore and sophomore julian reese all right what do the mountaineers have i mean offense already stated that they can cause problems nine seeds of 111 out of the last 16. let's see maryland is favorites obviously well hmm I think I'm gonna go Maryland here. Yeah, maybe save off the upsets for a little later. San Diego State versus Charleston. This one, this one's gonna be hype. Let me see, they both, they're both not the best teams. I mean, we got a fifth and 12th matchup. What do we really expect? But Charleston can score. And I do think, I think this is an upset here. Let me see. The Aztecs have only lost three games since December 10th. That's, that's nice, all right, um, but the Cougars may lack a star, but they have five players getting double figures. All right, you know what? It's convinced me. I think I'm going to go Charleston. Next, we have Virginia versus Furman. Let me see here. Virginia fourth seed, Furman 13th seed. This is another sleeper upset, but I do think Virginia holds their own. Let me see. The Cavaliers are the best offensive team in terms of assist to turnover rate. All right. That's pretty cool. While the Paladines are dancing for the first time in 43 years. Yeah, yikes, yikes, not a good sign. Uh, in the past four tourneys, 12 of the 16 matchups between number four and 13 were decided by single digits. So they're close games. Wow, thank you, ESPN. Let me see, uh, they lost to the NC State, Penn State. <sighs> Virginia's not good at all, I don't think. But I do think they are good enough to beat firm in here so let's go virginia all right creighton versus nc state now i think we've all seen the commercial where they talk about how creighton yeah uh, gonna fly through the rounds whatever corny commercial but i kind of like it kind of got kind of got me feeling creighton here let me see uh creighton opponents points per game is pretty low 68 that's pretty solid and they score a lot i kind of like this team just looking at it, don't call them a sleeper. Creighton is complete, well-rounded. Okay, ESPN, okay, they kind of like Creighton. Plus, they got the ad. Honestly, I think it's a sign, right? So, the Wolfpack excels when out in transition behind their high-scoring backcourt. Traquavion Smith and Jarkel Joyner. Wow, I shouldn't have tried that. Um, Oh, I do think, I mean, they are the like 11th best by BPI, whatever that means. Oh, uh, this is close. I think I'm going to go Creighton here. So right now we have Charleston as the only upset so far, but we're pretty early in the bracket, so we'll get to the big upsets. Let me see. Baylor versus UCSB. Here we go. This one's going to be an exciting matchup. California native, all right. I kind of like UCSB. Consider them as a school. Uh, Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Could they, could they pull it off? I don't know. Despite a disappointing exit from the Big 12 tournament, the Baylor Bears enter the big dance as a dangerous team and is excellent offensively. All right, all right, I see you, Baylor. While the Gauchos run an efficient offense with each each of their top six scorers shooting over 46%, the third seeds have won 85% of the time. I do think it's going to favor the Baylor Bears. I'm pretty sure they were a one seed, if I'm not mistaken, last year. I'm pretty sure. Let's go Baylor here. Missouri versus Utah State. Now this, this one, I think, I think Utah State, you know, they could have been ranked higher, honestly, uh, but Utah State, this one, this one I'm excited about. This matchup I'm really hyped for. Let me see the, the pretty solid defense, 69.7. I think that's pretty solid. I mean, we've seen a lot of other teams give up way more. I mean, Missouri, for example, 74.6. Come on now, Missouri, step your game up. Um, and, and Utah State scores just about as much as Missouri. Let me see here. Come on, Missouri. Give me a reason to root for you. The Tigers' offense is a roar that can put up points. Okay, kind of cringe. Missouri is one of the best 
tournament's worst rebounding teams. One of the teams. Okay. You know what? I think I think we're gonna go Utah State here. Fun to watch. Love it. Another upset. Second upset. See, I can I I, I root for upsets. Come on, I root for the underdog. Arizona versus Princeton. Not even gonna look at it. Arizona. Come on. I mean, I saw their game versus UCLA. They they played phenomenal. They were great. They were great. Uh, let's go Midwest here. Houston versus Northern Kentucky. Again, I don't see them. I don't see the 16th seed, honestly, winning. I mean, none of the one seeds are strong this year. So, uh, I don't I don't, I don't, don't know. I don't see a 16th seed pulling it off. Iowa versus Auburn. I hate the 8 through 9 matchups. Always a pain. Super hard to predict. Almost unpredictable, let's be real. But... Iowa, Iowa, Iowa. Is that the team with uh, that one guy who's really good? I mean, the thing. No, that's Purdue. That's Purdue. Never mind. Let me see. The Hawkeyes have one of the best offensive nations in the team in the league in the nation, ranking top four in offensive efficiency. What does Auburn have going for them? So the good thing is that Auburn gets to the line regularly. The bad thing is that they send their opponents adjust errors often. Okay, so they foul a lot. Honestly, streaky team. Maybe they get streaky. Maybe they get lucky. Versus Iowa. Maybe. Let me see. Iowa lost to Purdue. Lost to Duke. Did they even win a top? They did. Okay. Who did Alabama beat? Tennessee and Arkansas. Uh, honestly, I'm going to go Iowa here. Let's go Iowa. Oh, what are we? Six minutes into this one? Let's, uh, let's speed it up. Let's speed it up. We got a lot of picks. Miami versus Drake. Uh, I like you, Miami. You, you know what? Miami's cool. Uh, cool colors. The rock almost went there. Sorry, I forgot to click this. Uh, I said I will. Right. All right. Um, Indiana State versus Kent State. <sighs> Kent State, twenty and six. Indiana's not that strong. I mean, <sighs> eleven losses is kind of crazy for a fourth seed. Maybe I don't know. So let's go, Kent State. Kent State. Iowa State versus either Mississippi State or Pitt. Honestly, no, I was, is it, what is this? What team is this? Hold on. Um, it is, yeah, it is Iowa State. Honestly, whoever Iowa State's, they're going to have a rough, they're going to have a rough matchup. I think Mississippi State and Pittman are both very good teams, very good schools, but I'm going to go Iowa here. Xavier versus Kent, come on, come on, let's not waste our time. Xavier, Texas A&M versus Penn State. Wow. I do like the, Ag I like the Aggies a lot, you know. I think I've seen a few of their games. 4-1 versus top 25 teams. Defense, phenomenal. Scoring could be a little better. But they beat Alabama, who I love. They beat Auburn twice, who I have losing. Doesn't matter. And Missouri's a pretty high seed. So I think I'm going to go Texas A&M. Yeah, sorry, Penn State. Maybe next year. Texas versus Colgate. Colgate is always a 15th seed. And yet they never do anything. Don't, don't have Colgate winning. Texas, you got that. Purdue versus either TXCSU, FD, I don't know either of those schools. Um, Purdue, I like Purdue. I like I was talking about, they got that really cool big man. Uh, let's go Memphis versus FAU. Now, FAU, I'm pretty sure I heard uh, on ESPN, like one of the guys talking about FAU is going to be like a cool underdog pick. No, I saw it on Hammer Down, actually. Uh, the thing, the show after the Pat McAfee show. So, honestly, not really digging Memphis. What, 31st? They're pretty close, eight through nine seed. I haven't had a ninth seed win uh, all tournament yet, so FAU. Here we go. Duke versus Oral Roberts. This this matchup is gonna be hype. Let's be real. Uh, Duke, big blue blood school. Everyone knows them. Everyone loves them. But Oral Roberts, huge underdogs. They went super far in the tournament. Only like what uh, two years ago at this point. I don't know if they still have everyone who was there. But they were 18-0 in conference, and they can score the hell out of the ball. Honestly, Duke has had better rosters than this. Ooh, there's a reason they're the fifth seed. Although they should be higher. I mean, fifth seed is crazy. Uh, let's go Oral Roberts. Screw it. Oral Roberts, here we go. Um, Tennessee versus Louisiana. I know that Tennessee's a really good school. I don't know about the Raging Cajuns. That's a wild name. They lost to Texas by a lot. Lost to Drake. I'm not feeling very confident about the raging Cajuns. Let's just go Tennessee, come on. Kentucky versus Providence. Now, we talked about Kentucky earlier in the video. Um, I'm pretty sure they lost. They were the team that lost to St. Peter's, but I don't see them allowing themselves to get upset two years in a row, especially not versus Providence School, who I'm pretty sure Providence has made some runs in the past. 
Uh, have they had any notable wins this season? UConn, uh, Creighton, those are nice, but they also like lost two to UConn and lost one to Creighton. But who is Kentucky beat? I mean, what are they? They are two and four versus top 25 schools. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Let me see. They beat Tennessee twice. And I think I like Tennessee. They got killed by Alabama. They did beat Texas A&M and Auburn by a lot. Kentucky looks very streaky. But I already have Oral Roberts winning. So let's just let's just say Kentucky. Let's just say it. Uh, Kansas State versus Montana. You know, Montana. I don't even know why we're looking at this. I, uh, Kansas State. Oh, they have that. They have that guy that um, I saw this on ESPN. It was a special, right? This guy, he passed out on the court, what, like two years ago at this point, right? He passed out on the court like two years ago for uh, like some Florida school. It was wild. He's playing for Kansas State, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So let's just go Kansas. Michigan State versus USC. Oh my God, I love my Pac-12 schools. You know, they haven't been doing good in football, but basketball, oh my God, phenomenal. I mean, UCLA is like top of the country right now. Um, and Arizona. Arizona's great. Let me see. And the Trojans, I don't know, man. 19 and 12, pretty rough. Do they got anything going for them? I might just call this an upset because I'm a USC fan, you know. The Spartans are an offensive juggernaut. Tyson Walker, AJ Hoggard, wild name. Not digging the name Hoggard. Let's just go USC. Marquette versus Vermont. Uh, no. I mean... I got all the ones and twos winning so far. Do I just, do I just give this one? To, no, I'm not gonna let this one. Mar Marquette, you better not let my bracket sell. Twenty and six. UVM is not good. Please, please don't let them win. <sighs> let me see. Now we got the West. Kentucky, Kansas is the one seed, and the fact that Kansas is in the West, you know, I mean, they should be in the Midwest. Whatever. I guess there wasn't no schools good enough to be considered a one seed for the West. Maybe. Honestly, maybe. I think if UCLA beats Arizona for the Pac-12 championship game, they probably won't see it. Let's be real. Yeah, but that didn't happen. Kansas, Howard, spent too long on this game. It's Kansas. Let's go. Arkansas versus Illinois. Now, I do got one nine seed already winning. So, got that out of the way. Um, Alabama's, they lost to Alabama twice. Arkansas did. They lost to Creighton. Lost to Tennessee. Lost to, wow. What is their record against top two and eight? That alone, I might just have to go Illinois. Uh, again, Illinois, I think that's the move. St. Mary's versus BCU. BCU, this one's this one's a good one. This one's a good one. Ooh, they're saying that BCU can pull off the upset. St. Mary's is one of the more likelier teams to get upset in this tournament. And I could see why, you know, they they didn't they don't score the most points. Um, who have they beaten? They've beaten Gonzaga, they've beaten San Diego State, they've beaten Oral Roberts, Vanderbilt. And while they're top 25 schools, they're, they're not really crazy. You know, those are their notable wins, right? Nothing crazy. Um, what is VCU? Why have a strong Cinderella team? See, but is it a Cinderella team if everyone thinks they're going to win? Let's be real. Not really. Come on. If VCU's like, they're like favorite underdogs. They're about as favorite as an underdog can get. Um, uh, St. Mary. Let's go. Uh, UConn, I, I want to... Don't even know how to pronounce that school's name. Uh, love UConn. Go Huskies. Uh, TCU versus ASU in slash Nevada. TCU, they're great at football. But I do think that if, a a if ASU wins, they beat TCU. Come on. I don't even know if they win, though. So, Gonzaga versus Grand Canyon. Gonzaga, Grand Canyon University. GCU, I think I've seen their commercials. Unless I'm getting it twisted. Not, a I don't know about basketball, though. Uh, Northwestern versus Boise State, 10 versus 7 seed. Let me check this out real quick. San Diego State, they beat in Texas A&M, Utah. Honestly, I kind of like some of Boise State's wins. Let's go, Boise State. And then UCLA, Pac-12 school, come on. No doubt. All right, here we go. Here we go. Second round. Let's speed this up. We're already at 14 minutes. Kind of a long-ass video. Bama versus Maryland. Ooh, Brandon Miller's nice. Come on, Brandon Miller. <sighs> He's just Brandon Miller. Uh, Charleston versus Virginia. I already thought that Virginia was a weak ass team, and Charleston. I love Charleston. Honestly, I could see them going. I could see them going to the Sweet Sixteen. Uh, Creighton versus Baylor again. Creighton's got that commercial going for them. I'm pretty sure Baylor was hasn't gotten. Uh, they were like a high seed last year, uh, but they did kind of choke in the Big Twelve tournament this year. 
and that's what matters. The Bears will be a team that can shore up their defensive struggles. I don't know, man. They've lost 10 games. Oh, crazy. Arizona. Arizona's nice. Come on, they're not losing. Let's be real. All right, I think we go Midwest now. Houston versus Iowa. Uh, I think I see Houston as being one of the weaker one seeds. Not that they're bad. It's just I think some of the one seeds are stronger. And Iowa, they're nice. I mean, we did see an eighth seed in North Carolina go all the way last year. So maybe an eighth seed does it again, but I don't think it's going to be Iowa. Now we got Miami versus Kent State. <sighs> Miami versus Kent State. Ooh, I don't know about this one. I mean, oh, I did have Miami winning pretty easily. Kent State has kept it close. They have lost all their notable games, but they've kept it close in all those games. All they really need is to get hot. Does Miami even have a big win? Maybe Duke, but they, they lost to them twice. Kent State, here we go. Man, uh, I don't know. Okay, whatever, Kent State. Iowa State versus Xavier. Xavier is cool name. X. Let's go, Xavier. Texas a name versus Texas. Ooh, this is a hype matchup. Honestly, Texas. Two Texas schools I love this matchup. I'm going to go Texas A&M. And yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go East. Purdue versus FAU. Um, this is the first major upset. I think so. I think FAU. I think they can take out Purdue. Now, Oral Roberts versus Tennessee. Honestly, Oral Roberts had their run two years ago. It's not going to happen this time. Tennessee, let's go. Uh, Kentucky versus Kansas State. I like Kansas State. Their story, their school. Honestly, I think I barely chose Kentucky to win last round, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I barely had them winning versus Providence. Let's just go Kansas State here. Marquette versus USC. No confidence in Marquette at all. I don't even know who's on their team. Let's go Pac-12. Kansas versus Illinois. Kansas, easy. St. Mary versus UConn. I do like UConn. I do like... Uh, St. Mary's pretty cool. But I'm going to have to give the edge to UConn here. ASU versus Gonzaga. ASU could be a... I don't even know if ASU makes it beats Nevada. But if they do... Sorry, Gonzaga. I got ASU. Uh, UCLA versus Boise State. UCLA. Not even a... No discussion. All right. Alabama versus Charleston. This this is where some of the upsets say we say bye-bye to some of our favorites. We're in the Sweet 16. I got Alabama taking out Charleston. Charleston's made it far enough for a 12th seed. You did great. Creighton versus Arizona. Now, everyone loves Arizona. But the commercial. I mean, the commercial says Creighton's fly. They make a deep run. I mean, Olide would be pretty deep for Creighton. Screw it. We're going Creighton. Whatever. Houston versus Kent State. That's an easy win for Houston. Xavier versus Texas A&M. In the Sweet 16 matchup, I got Texas A&M. As cool as Xavier is... I mean, Texas A&M is just such a good school, you know? Everything about them is kind of nice. They're, I don't even know why they're a 7th seed. Okay, let's go East. East here. FAU versus Tennessee. Now, now we get into the thick of things. I don't know. I don't even know if I feel confident about Tennessee. I think, uh, who do I, do I have anyone making a run? I mean, 6th seed. FAU, I think FAU makes it. I think as a ninth seed, FAU, they pull it off. If they can beat, what, Purdue, then they can beat Tennessee. Kansas State versus USC. My Pac-12 bias has to end at some point. I think it ends here with Kansas State beating USC. Now, Kansas versus UConn could go either way. It's a coin flip, really. Do I think the, a Blue Blood team makes it this far? You know, I have no idea. Let me see. Seventh, ninth, ninth, sixth. I think... I think Kansas is the second one seed to fall. We'll go UConn here. Now, UCLA versus ASU. I love ASU. I've said this the entire video. But UCLA, come on, come on. I mean, I mean Jaime, whatever, whatever. Jaime is really good. Um, yeah, I don't know much about UCLA. Just that they're cool. Let me see if I can get any reading on them. Uh, Jalen Clark losing him. Jaime, Hawkins Jr. That's what it is. Sorry, Jaime. Sorry. I mean... No disrespect. Tiger Campbell, fresh. Oh, Amari Bailey. That guy's freaking cool. Loved him in high school. That's who I was thinking of. You know, couldn't put a name to the face. <sighs> All right. Let's go back up for the Elite Eight. In the South, we have Alabama versus Creighton. 
and I think that Brandon Miller does his thing. I mean, love Creighton, love the commercial, but come on, it's Alabama. Houston versus Texas A&M. I do think the third first seed falls. I think Texas A&M. I've liked them the whole run. I've said this. I got Texas A&M over Houston. Now, as for the East, it's pretty wild that FAU's even made it this far, but I don't see them as an Elite Four team. Let's be real, they're not. They're not an Elite Four team. Kansas State. UConn versus UCLA, coin flip again. UConn, you know, I've had UConn in a lot of close games, like the entire tournament. But ugh, UCLA, I mean, I saw them versus Arizona. I've watched most of their games, even though I can't remember any of their players. And I got UCLA. You know, sorry, rough, rough. Um, Alabama versus Kansas State. Is it an upset? Is the final first seed finally going to fall? And to that, I say no. Come on, Alabama. Now, Texas A&M versus UCLA. Ooh, this is a good matchup. Would love to see this. Have they already played? No, I don't think so. Um, Texas A&M, they're a perfect storm. And that's why I have them making it to the Elite Four, honestly. But I think their run ends here. I think a one and two seed in the finals makes a lot of sense. So I got Alabama versus UCLA. And as for my pick, I am going to have to go with Mm, Brandon Miller or Jaime Hawkins Jr. And I do think that UCLA comes away with it because Alabama can't be good at football and basketball. Now, as for scores, as for scores, I have no idea what the score is going to be. This is just some random tiebreaker that they put in in case everyone somehow, in case two people somehow tie with the exact same bracket. Uh, what would a good score be? Let me see. Let's just look at last year's. What is it called? Last year's wiki 2023 March Madness 2022 March Madness finals. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Let's just nothing crazy on those tabs, right? Nah, my tabs are cool. All right, we have uh, what was the finals for last year's? What was the score for last year's finals? We'll just go like something near that. Did I did I miss it? Um, North Carolina 69, Kansas 72. All right, I think we go 69 to 67. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, let's submit it. And that is my bracket. I think it's a wonderful bracket. UCLA to win. All right, that's it for the video. Really long video. What, like 30 minutes plus at this point? Yikes, yikes. Not me for it to be that long. Deuces.